is the Son of God. He's real. Yes, he is. Amen. He's alive. Yeah. He forgave me of my sins. Amen. If you didn't know my past, you would know I need a lot of forgiveness. Amen. Amen. And God changed my life and made me whole. Today, um, as we went preaching on uh, outrageous generosity this, this uh, month, Andy was shared a few things uh, at the beginning of the month that, you know, caused a look at ourselves, and then we talked about, even taught about budgeting, right? Let's, if we're going to give outrageously to God, then we should put in our budget some extra money and set aside just to give away to people and bless them, amen? Not because they deserve it, it's because, you know what, God extended grace to us and forgave us of our sins, and we should extend the same grace to Him, and today we're going to talk about how God had outrageously given to us in a way that would cause us to have a new life and change us forever and ever if we just believe in this thing called His resurrection. Amen. So Amen. let's. I want to. Um, let's start off this morning and let's turn to the resurrection story that Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's start there this morning. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 8, and then uh, 21 through 26. And maybe a little bit more after that, but I'll just do it start with those this morning. Praise the Lord. How many is excited that it's Easter Sunday? Amen. How many is excited that it's really called Resurrection Sunday? Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah. Now, my friends that are non-believers, I write on their Facebook page, I write Happy Easter because that, I'm not, I don't want to offend them. Like, hey, you're all messed up. You, you, you know, you don't understand. This is actually, you know, I want to win them through love and not, you know, condemnation like God loved me, right? So I say, Happy Easter to you too. And then I say, uh, to those that are believers across the world that I connect with, then I say, Happy Resurrection Day with a big smiley face on there because I'm so happy about this special day. Let's go 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Are you there? Are you open up your iPhones or your iPad, your, your Bible if you have it? All right. And um, do we have, um, we should put that sign up, outrageous generosity. Do we have that? Can we put that up there? That looked pretty cool. So uh, verse 1, it says, Now, brothers, are you there? Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel. This is the gospel. If you don't know what the gospel is, today I'm going to remind you just like Paul. I preach to you what you have received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you were saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain, for what I receive I pass on to you as of, for, as, of, as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins. That's the gospel, right? Yeah. According to the scriptures, that he was buried and he raised on the third day, according to scripture. And that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared um, to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, more of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James. Then he also appeared to the apostles. And at last of all, he appeared to me also as one who had been abnormally born. Now let's jump over to um, verse 21. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead came also through a man. For as in Adam all died, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own time, turn. Uh, Christ the first fruits. Then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when his, he hands over the kingdom of God to the Father. After he has destroyed all dominions, authorities, and power. Praise the Lord. Say that. He, is, he destroyed all dominion, all evil. Death, hell, and grave has been destroyed because of Jesus. Amen? Amen? You don't fear death anymore because of Jesus. Amen? We have life in Jesus. Hallelujah. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is Satan. Death. 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 We won't have to die. Think about that, Lewis. We don't have to die anymore, right? That's right. I have a friend right now that is uh, at, at home. Their, uh, their mother is passing away, probably as we speak, going from this life to next. Amen? All of them are believers. Amen? They're in their room. They're singing praise songs to Jesus. They're, there's just a peace in that room, knowing as she's taking her last breath and going to be with the Lord. There's no fear in death anymore because of Jesus. 
Yes. Now, if I was preaching down south in North Carolina, I'd hear a big amen and like hallelujah. We have victory over sin, death, and the grave because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. Amen. Let me amen. remind you. Let, and thank you for that. Thank you. Let me remind you what happened in the beginning. And let me take you through this redemption story until today as we celebrate God's gracious gift to us. Amen? He was so generous and so loving and so kind to us. Such amazing thing to happen to us as he died on the cross so our sins can be forgiven. Remember when sin entered the world? How many remember that story in Genesis? Yes. In the garden, when Adam and Eve were in the garden and they were tempted and they yielded to the temptation and sin entered the world for the very first time. And in Genesis chapter 3, we see that story, how Eve was deceived and Adam was deceived. And the enemy brought, uh, even questioned the word of God. And then and, and, uh, Eve tried to say, no, that's not what God said, and added words to the story. And, and just deception came, and deception came, and sin entered the world. And God had to do what he had to do. He had to, he had to leave. He had to take his creative being, this man and this woman, God could not have them in his presence any longer. They had to leave the garden. But as they left, we see the redemption story, even in Genesis, where God had to take an animal and slay that animal, make clothes for that man and woman. Who is the animal? Who is the one that was sacrificed for the sins? Who did that represent? That represented Jesus, amen? So even in Genesis, we see that God, even though he had to punish the sin, he had, he bought, he said, listen, there's going to be a time of redemption. There's going to be a time where we are now together. There's going to be a time we won't be separated anymore. And we're going to be as we were in the garden. That means we can walk today in God's presence. Amen? Today, if we walk after the Spirit, not after our own desires, we walk in the presence of God, just like Adam and Eve before this sin, we can walk with God and talk with God and be with God. How gracious is our God? How loving is our God to restore us to that reunion again, to be restored into that place of, of oneness with Him? Oh, I don't know about you, but I get like excited about that. Amen. Amen. I'm excited to, to know that we were lost, but now we're found. We were away from God, but God restored us to a relationship because of Jesus. And as we go through time, we see the, in Isaiah and, and Ezekiel how they prophesied about this Jesus coming, how he was going to be born of a virgin, how he's going to be raised up and confound the even wise people that day. We see that his his death in Psalms 22 was predicted that he could be beaten and, and mocked and made fun of. We see in Isaiah 53 where it says, By his stripes, how I many love this, this, this prophecy? By his stripes, right. we are all yeah. healed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Oh, we are all healed. How many believe that we are, can be healed because of what Jesus did? Amen. How many don't believe? Let's, how many don't know for sure? Let's do this. How many need a touch from God in your body this morning? Come on, Lewis. Come on, anybody else? Come on, let's be, let's, let's be honest. We're in church now. Come on. <laughs> I need a touch. Wait, keep your hand up for a minute. I'm just not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call on your name. You need touch in your body, right? In your mind, in your spirit, in your physical body. In your physical <laughs> body. Yep. In your physical body, I need healing this morning. Come on, raise your hand up. I want you to think about the story about the woman with the issue of blood. She went out, she reached yeah. the very hem of Jesus' garment, she touched it, and virtue said, virtue came out of Jesus and went into her, and she was healed from that issue. Oh, amazing. So let's reach up in heaven right now. And I want you just in your mind's eye for a moment, would you just touch the hem of his garment? Would you reach out to Jesus who's reaching out to you right now? Father, your word tells us that in Isaiah, uh, prophesied that in Isaiah, that by the stripes, the horrible death, the beating, the, the, the mocking, the, the, the whipping that Jesus took, Father, it was for our healing. Amen. So, Father, I pray faith arise up in this room this morning, God, and we receive our healing because of Jesus. Now, would you just begin to thank Jesus? Thank you, thank Jesus, you, for Jesus. being beaten for my, by, you, for my healing. Thank you for taking that punishment for me. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Father God, that you provide a way that in my body I can be healed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, come on. Thank you. Just thank him out loud now. Just kind thank of, you, Father. Yeah, thank him out loud. Thank you, thank Father, you, Father, for your healing in the name of Jesus. 
be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive Hallelujah. that this morning. Receive his healing. He provided healing through his death. And more than that, every ounce of his blood was, was, was taken from his body. And the Bible tells us plainly that through that blood, all our sins can be taken away. Hallelujah. You know what that really means? It means if I sin, it's like I never sinned before. If I had a horrible life, like I could tell you my story, but I won't tell you this morning. If you would know what I did and the things I was involved in, listen, God can make it all as white as snow. Hallelujah. That's like you never sinned. That's like you never did anything wrong. How amazing is that? We have to believe that, though. We have to say, we have to accept the fact that even though we don't deserve it, Jesus did it for us anyway. Amen? You deserve it because you are God's children. God loves you. And God cares about you. And he wants you to be new inside and in your spirit every day. Hallelujah. Every day you can be clean. Every day you can be washed away. Well, I made a mistake. No, it doesn't matter what mistakes you made. If you just simply believe and ask Jesus. And the Bible says this. That if we repent of our sins, then he'll forgive us. Now, I know we talked this many times here, but the word repentance is simply, well, it's not simple. Let me take that back from you. Because when we fight against our fleshly nature, it's hard for us to repent. It's hard for us to turn away from that. So I used to teach it this way. I'm walking this way, and I repent, so I'm walking this way now. How many heard that before? I did it about face from this life, and now I'm going to start walking over here. But you know how hard it is just to walk this way? Huh? If I don't walk in the Spirit, if I don't walk after God, it's hard to walk this way. It's, easy, it's like I'm pulling back, and I want to do this. But when I repent, I'm taking my mind now. Listen, this is important. I'm changing my thinking. I'm not pursuing my own desires now. I'm turning this, starting this. I want to serve God. I want to seek after Him. I want to know Him, and He'll help me through this process. I can't do it on my own. That's what's so beautiful about the redemption story. I can't redeem my life, no matter how good or how much works I do, or how, how much I give away, or whatever we do. It's not, it's not good enough. The only thing that redeems us is the blood of Jesus. Amen. And us following after Him. Amen? Say it with Amen. me. Us, us following Amen. after Amen. Him. See, I can't have a redemption moment. I can say, oh, I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm all good. So the rest of my life, I do whatever I want. That's not, that's not what it is. It's like the disciples. You have to follow Jesus all the days of your life, every moment, every hour, every day, every week, every month, year after year after year, I have to serve Him with all my heart, with all my soul, and all that's in within, within me. I have to serve my God and my Savior, and then I will. That's repentance. That's changing the way I live. That's the way. That's going after God. Amen. And then my 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 desires are different than the things of this world. I begin to pursue the things of God, and that's why I can give generously to those that have need. That's why I just pray today that we just give an offering to CareNet today that's just going to just blow their mind. Amen. Because they are doing so many great things as we're going to hear at the end of the service. I can't do that when I think of myself. Oh, how much money I got in my wallet? How much money I got in the checking account? You know, what are, what are all my needs? See, when God moves on you, you don't think about those things. You just do it. Yeah. You want me to write a check for how much? You want me to do what? See, in the flesh, I can't do that, but in the spirit, I can. Because I want to seek after God. Amen? Praise the Lord. So God showed and proved his generosity. It's amazing. God showed his love to us. He, even though Jesus was hanging on the cross, dying, every ounce of blood is falling, falling from his body. He's gasping for air. He's taking his last breath. He says it's finished. We call that, we did that on Good Friday, Good Friday right? We, we celebrate, we, we honor, we worship, we thank Jesus for, for his dying on the cross. When he said it was finished, it was interesting, the Bible says this. When he said it was finished, he took his last breath. I can't even imagine that myself. The pain that his, went through his body, the, just the horrific death that he died for our sins, for our healing, for everything that we need. Because God in the beginning saw that this is what had to happen. 
a perfect sacrifice for the world. He said it's finished. And the, the Bible says in the temple, there was this place called the Holy of Holies. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where God dwelt in this holy place, in this temple. And there's this huge curtain that was separated the holy place from the holies of holies. Where the priests, where the showbread, where the candlesticks, where the, where the uh, incense table was. And then into the next, the next room, if, if you will, where the curtain was, there was this, the, the holy place where God sat on the mercy seat. Which is a whole sermon in itself, but we'll get into that. It says the curtain in that place will rip from top to bottom. Why is that so significant in this story? Because now we have now we're able to communicate with God. That's right. Now we don't have to go through a priest. Now we don't have to sacrifice animals. Now we don't have to do all those things. Now you and me can walk into God's presence at any time. Because God paid that penalty. We're not sinful people. We're redeemed people because of what Jesus did for us. And now we can go in the presence of God. We don't need nothing else. And you can walk in God's presence. That's why right now where you're praying, where you're sitting, you can pray and ask God. When you drive down the road, you can talk to God. When you, if you're at home or you're at work, you can talk to God. You can go right in His presence. Father God has an ear to listen to your prayers. How amazing what Jesus did for us. That's like he restored Adam and Eve. It's like taking Adam and Eve and putting them back in the garden. And now that you can commune with God any time. How wonderful. I don't have to be alone in this world. I don't have to fight my own fight. I don't have to do anything. I can go to God who created everything and saw in me a son and a daughter that you can be restored to him. What an amazing Gracious oh, thing that God did for us. Amen? We can now go to him. The second thing, it said that happened at the, 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 the tomb where Jesus was, all of uh, the tombstones that were there, or the where all the rocks were, they were all split in two. God even conquered nature. He took, there was nothing that could hold God back from anything. And the next thing that just blows my mind as I read this over and over, and I was preparing for the sermon, I'll get into the points now is that over 500 people came out of the grave and walked around Jerusalem. They were resurrected too. They came out of the tomb just like Jesus did. Amen? They walked around. People knew them and said, Hi, hey, Grandma. Hi, Grandpa. How you doing? They came over for dinner. Could you imagine that? How crazy is that? That's what's in, let's, let's go back and read it. It says, let's go back to um, 1, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And it said, Paul reminding us of the gospel. He says, Christ died for our sins according to scripture. So is prophesied in Genesis, in Isaiah. All throughout scripture is prophesied Jesus was going to die. Amen? He, he did it. You go back and look at how many's got like a Bible app. You got a Bible app, right? You can go on Google. You know, all the scriptures that Jesus fulfilled. And I'll give you hundreds of scriptures that Jesus fulfilled. It's amazing. Just read through them. He did this and did this from Genesis all the way through. He fulfilled them all. Every prophecy that was ever written about Jesus, he fulfilled in his short 33 years he was on earth. Amazing. Amen. Just go ahead. It's a great study. Then, then he was bruised for our, um, he was, uh, uh, that he was uh, buried and raised on the third day, so he was in the ground for three days. What did he do for three days in the ground? Does anybody know? It's in scripture. Okay? It's, he got he got hell, he got the keys from death, hell, and grave. Took Satan. He goes, Satan, come here, buddy. Bam! These are mine now. You have no authority over death, hell, and the grave any longer. And then it says, all those that were in Abraham's bosom, or those that were in purgatory, or whatever you want to call it. Me. They were they were free because they believed that he was the son of God. Now you see all these people, 500 in the city of Jerusalem alone. I don't know how many all over the world don't record that, but I'm sure there's many more. Interesting. He appeared in his resin yes. body to the disciples. He appeared to these 500. He walked into a room. Oh, you don't believe me, Thomas? Look at it. Put your hands here. Put your, put your hands on my side. Let me show you. I am him. I am the one who I said I was going to be. I was going to come back. And then they believed. Amen? And the power of that caused us to be here today. 
The power of his resurrection causes us to believe today. Because why would we even come to church on Sunday? What are we here for? The only reason we're together is because Jesus did exactly what he said he would do. He would raise again and become alive. And he walked around earth and oh, he even ate fish with them. Here, I'll prove to you. I'm so the flesh and bone, and then he, he even said, give me something to eat, and he ate with them. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? Jesus can eat with us every day, amen? Let's look at this. This is, now, this is kind of interesting, because Jesus in his earthly ministry did some things that caused the people to come to this point of believing. I think this is important. So he raised from the dead a little uh, girl. A widow's son, first of all, in Luke 7, 13 through 15. You don't have to turn there. But this, this widow's son passed away, and Jesus healed him, raised him from the dead. Right? And then Jairus' uh, daughter, he, he, uh, Matthew 9, 23, he raised her from the dead. She was dead every morning. He says, get all the, uh, the mourners out of here. And what he did, he raised her from the dead. He was showing them this power that he had. Already before even his resurrection. And then how about Lazarus' story? Everybody knows Lazarus' story. John chapter 11. I mean, Jesus was in another town ministering. His, his uh, uh, Mary Martha, right, Lazarus. And then they were his, I mean, they were, they were, great, they were great friends. They supported Jesus' ministry. They were, they were uh, like uh, cousins, I guess. I don't know how close they were, but anyway, they were close to each other. And, you know, Jesus, word went to Jesus that Lazarus was dying. And Jesus like, okay, I'll be there in a couple days. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, the family was hopeless, their, 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 their brother's dying, and the people are mourning, and she's like, hey, don't worry, fear not. Don't worry. I'm going to take care of this. Jesus shows up a couple days later, Lazarus already in the grave. They're questioning him, why did you come earlier? Why did you come, Jesus? You could have came and... No, no, no. See, Jesus had to demonstrate something to them more that was greater than just, just coming and heal the sick. He like, this is important. This was right before he got arrested. This is right before he went to Gethsemane. This is, right, this is just right before that. And all of a sudden, he goes and he speaks to the grave. He said the word. Lazarus. I don't know how he said it. We, we tried to dramatize it a little bit, you know? I don't know how we... Les, uh, we could just do uh, we could do uh, resurrection practice out at the graveyard. You know, we gotta show up there. How many think I'm crazy already, right? I mean, you know, I don't know. Jesus did. I could just practice it. Like, you know, where's my faith? I do believe God can raise the dead. Yes. Have anybody seen a dead person raised to life? No. I've heard some testimonies from some missionaries. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, make the hair stand on the back of your head. There's a there's, this is a true story. A missionary I met in, uh, at the uh, Brownsville Revival, he was uh, in uh, Russia, in, uh, what was it, uh, Siberia, I'm saying, Siberia, Siberia in, in this really uh, remote town. Uh, this missionary came through a few times, you know, he preached the gospel and shared Jesus' love with the people, right? And it would be every few months, four or five months difference, you know? And so this gentleman passed away, and they wrapped his body up, and they put him in the church. And they, well, next time he came through, he says, if you can raise him from the dead like you said you could, then we'll believe in this Jesus. You know what happened? Come on. You know what happened? Yeah. This guy got up. He's been dead for three months. He got up out of that, uh, whatever he had him in. I don't know why. He didn't tell me all those details. He was alive. That whole village is now Christians. Crazy. Can God do that today? Yes. Why? Because God is God. Do, I always tell people when I pray for them, I right, so I don't, I just pray for you and I believe. You believe with me, great. If you get healed, glory to God. If you don't, glory to God anyway. He's still God. It doesn't matter, right? We just yeah. do it. We just pray and believe. That's called faith. Sometimes we don't see what happens. We don't know for years and years of what happens, but God does, and He knows more than us. He's just asking us to be faithful and believe in Him. Amen? And then Jesus Himself raised from the dead. Amen? Jesus Himself became alive in Christ Jesus. He came out of that grave. Remember? Who did He appear to first? Mary Magdalene. Mary. He, Mary. He, prayed, he came, he was, they came there to finish up the burial process. And he was alive. Guess what? It was a, the day after the Sabbath, right? It was the morning. That was like Sunday morning. Yeah. 
the first day of the week. He was, that's why we celebrate church on the first day of the week, because we celebrate his resurrection. Because it, if it wasn't for his resurrection, folks, what we believe in is nothing. None of this, none of this would be true. It's because of his resurrection. We have to believe. What do you believe? I believe this, that God created everybody. And through one man's sin, Adam, sin entered the world. And that's where we get our sin nature from. And that sin nature, because of John chapter 3, tells us that we can be born again. Our sin nature can be changed into a God nature, a spiritual nature. And when our spirit becomes alive to God, our life changes. Or it's really miserable. <laughs> Come on. Right? We want to change, but we, Paul says it, I try to change, but I have trouble changing, but I want to change, but I struggle with this on a daily basis, but I really want to be like Jesus. Oh, Lord, help me. Right? So we talk, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ, our life can be changed and different. Hallelujah. And we have victory because of Him. So we can be a spiritual person, not a fleshly person. You say amen? amen? I can walk after amen. the Spirit because of the resurrection, not after my flesh and desire. I can change because Jesus is alive. It's, he's real, amen? amen? God demonstrated His outrageous generosity to us when we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. That's my version of the verse. So that we can be alive today. Amen? Not spiritually dead, spiritually alive. Oh, wait, how many remember the day that you said yes to Jesus? I'm, I'm assuming everybody's. You remember the day that you said yes to Jesus? And your life's been perfect ever since, hasn't it? Sure. <laughs> okay. That's a lie, right? That, that's not true, is it? So, I remember the day I accepted Jesus, and man, what a roller coaster, right? It doesn't mean I'm lost, not that I'm, I'm a bad person, not, but it means that I'm fighting after my fleshy nature, that it, I'm, I need I, uh, one of my... Uh, Evangelists and friends used to say, we need spiritual uh, Q-tips. Have you ever heard that before? We need spiritual Q-tips. We need to clean out our ears a little bit so we can actually hear what the Spirit is saying to us each and every day. Amen. So we can live generously for the kingdom of God and serve Him with all our heart, with all our soul, with everything that's in us. Amen. Today, I just want to challenge you to take a moment and examine your life and say, do I believe, do I believe what happened today, 2,000 years ago? Will I surrender and follow this Jesus so he can be glorified in the earth? Amen? Well, can I say, yes, Jesus, I will follow you no matter what you have for me. I will do it. And no, you know what? This is the hard part for some of us. This is, the, can I just, I'm just going to add one more thing. I just feel like when you're in your worst struggles, Jesus is the closest to you. It really is. Amen? Hang on to him. And he will follow you. And he'll guide you. And he'll show you what to do. Amen? That's a humble place for me. I because I, I don't know about you, but I like to take care of my own problems. Like, I want to, I have to submit myself to his, to what his power is and get in my life and in situations. And God begins to change it because I'm submitting myself to him and allowing him to rule and reign over it instead of me trying to control it and take care of it. Any other, anybody else have problems like that? Like, yeah. We got, it's kind of a common thing for us believers is to totally serve him in every situation. Amen. Let me, would you just close your eyes for a moment? Let me ask you this. Today, everything that you've ever heard about Jesus is true. Yes. He was prophesied that he would come and be born of a virgin. He would be raised up, and in about his 33rd year, he would take on his ministry, and he would die physically on a cross, a horrible death, that his death, oh, can't even comprehend that, that through his blood all our sins be forgiven and our new life can, be, can change us as we believe in him. Yes. Third day, his, 
his body was taken off that cross and put into a grave. A stone was rolled away. Even the religious people said, oh, we better make sure we guard it because we don't want the apostles to come steal his body and say that what he said was going to be true. But it happened. The power of God came down like lightning. A stone was rolled away. And Jesus walked out of the grave and walked around Jerusalem for 40 days, seen by 500 people and all the apostles and his disciples. And then he ascended into heaven. Praise God that we may have praise, two lives. Praise God. Today, if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, and you're going to say, Pastor Bob, I want to start following Jesus, would you just raise your hand and put it back down? Hallelujah. Or maybe today, you're struggling with sin. You're struggling with trying to follow Jesus, and, and you want to follow Him, but you struggle with your flesh and your spirit. If that's you today, would you just raise your hand and put it back down? Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? I'm struggling with this relationship. I want to serve him, but it's just hard. Anyone else? Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Yes, thank you for that hand. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Right where you're at, I was going to pray for you. You that raise your hand, and maybe the rest of you that maybe you didn't, or even if you're, if you're serving God, with all your heart. That's great. But I just want to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the, the outrageous love that you showed us by sending your son to die for us. I thank you, God, that, oh, if we just simply believe and humble ourselves and say, yes, God, I want to follow you. Yes, Jesus, I'll follow you all the days of my life. Yes, Jesus, I will love people like you love me. Love, yes, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. For you that raise your hand today, I just pray that prayer over you. Please ask God to forgive you. And say, yes, Jesus, I will follow you. And I'll serve you with all my might and all my strength and everything within you. And within me, I'll serve you, Lord. Father, you see the hearts that are here today, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, that you have brought us together for this time. Father, you understand how great and how wonderful and how great your love was for us that you sent Jesus to do all these things for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless your children now. In Jesus' precious name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. And we're going to have a... And you have